If you had told me at the time, I'm gonna look out eight, you know, 16 years and say, you're gonna be involved in helping to eliminate billions of calories from the American diet. You're gonna be working for an organization that's supporting the growth of organic agriculture and promoting fair trade labor standards. I would say, wow, that sounds like a really great NGO or, or government entity, what's the name of that? I never would have guessed that it would have been a beverage company, let alone uh, one that today is owned by the Coca-Cola company, or let alone one that delivered a 26-fold return to its original investors. We've been approached by a lot of different uh, international food and beverage companies, but we felt um, Coke was a good partner, and part of it was their vision of the future. So back in 2007, they, they identified three big megatrends. I'm sure these will resonate with you. The movement towards health and wellness. Consumers are seeking out you know, healthier options and ways of living and move towards environmental consciousness. And then this effort towards social responsibility. And, and when you look at this white space, there's a small nexus where they all fuse together, where a business will try to make decisions that embrace all of these values and trends. And if you look back in 2007, it was a relatively small space. But by 2012 or 2014, the standard for doing business is that a future-oriented business is going to be able to make decisions and, and operate in a way that really uh, recognizes all of these priorities. And, and their contention was that honest tea is in that space, and that's what the investment's about. Yes, it's a tea brand. Yes, it's an organic brand. Yes, it's a low-calorie brand. But even more than that, it's really a future-oriented brand. If you look at the health trends in our society, they're, they're really um, they're shameful. The United States is the wealthiest country in the history of the world. We have more advanced knowledge of science and medicine than any civilization in history has ever had, and we spend more per capita. But when the United Nations in 2010 ranked the average life expectancy of all the countries in the world, we weren't number one or number two. We were number 40. So that's not the right direction. And there's no reason our society can't do better. It has to do better. It's, it's literally not sustainable. But the biggest driver of change can be business. And because of this, the fact that this is where we are, Large businesses, I don't want to say they got us here, but they're invested in the status quo. So they're not going to be the ones to take us in a different direction. It's going to be the smaller entrepreneurs who can create different ideas of doing, of, of commerce. And so our growth has what we call mission-driven innovation. All the time, we've looked at our innovation as an as a energizer of our growth. It's, it's um, whenever we've been able to take our mission up a notch, it's helped differentiate our product in the marketplace and it's helped drive growth. One of the best, fastest growing parts of our business is a line called Honest Kids. It started when my son, who is, um, now, he's in, now he's 20, but at the time he was about 11, um, and he's, I was making lunch and he went you know, for school, he said, Daddy, I know you sell healthy drinks to grown-ups, but these drinks you put in my lunchbox are really sugary. And I looked at it and it had more calories per ounce than a can of soda. And I realized, why couldn't we take the same equities, low sugar, organic, that we have in our tea and put it into a kid's drink pouch. So we made Honest Kids with 40 calories a pouch and the businesses exploded. And, and 40 calories was just the right point where it tasted good enough. You know, look, if you ask a kid, which tastes better, something twice as sweet or half as sweet? I, mean, I don't know a kid who wouldn't say, I like the sweeter one. So you had to have something that was, that they, you put in a lunchbox and they would be willing to drink. And on Monday they may sort of turn their nose up, but they're really a captive audience. A lunchbox consumer has what's in the lunchbox. <laughs> now, now they can trade and they may, uh, but what's happened with Honest Kids is um, it's a chance, fi someone finally gave parents a choice to, a chance to, to buy a higher quality product. This was a few years ago. This is in Anhui province in South Central China. And I had flown a long way, driven a long way, flown again, driven again until the road literally came to an end. And they led me down the path to a river. And, and uh, I didn't see any tea bushes there either. I said, well, we're, you know, we're here to see the tea bushes, right? They said, oh yes, it's on the other side of the river. And I said, well, um, ha have you thought about building a bridge? And they said, well, no, we they gave me four interesting reasons why they hadn't built a bridge. But the most interesting reason they gave me was that if we build a bridge, then there'll be a road. If we build a road, then there'll be infrastructure and then there'll be pollution. So instead of a bridge, this guy came up in a bamboo raft we got our feet a little bit wet, it was a little shaky, <laughs> but we ended up in the tea garden. And for me, the insight was, I saw a problem. I saw no bridge and I said, this is a problem. For this community in China, which we all know is ra rapidly developing, not having a bridge was a solution. And, and for me, it's actually helped me think more broadly about our whole, our broader approach, how we approach things as a society. We're a very solution-oriented society. We see problems, we think of solutions. 
sometimes we don't realize that our solutions you know, create other problems. So organic being the best example, we see pests in a field, we know a solution are chemical pesticides to kill those pests. We now know that those chemical pesticides create other problems. And so often, um, sometimes the best solutions could be the problems themselves. And one broader way to think about it, people look at our society today and we can talk about the health problems, the environmental problems, and people will say, well, you know, business is the problem. And I think business could be the solution. It's how we approach it and what we do with it. It's a human business, legacy we want to leave behind us.